morning class. Uh, today we will focus on um, on graphing or sketching the graphs of um, rational functions. Graphing rational functions. In order to do this, it is important that um, we are able to check one, you must check for the symmetry uh, we need to check for symmetry with respect to with respect to either y axis or origin i think this is uh, uh we said the the graph of the function is symmetrical with respect to the y axis when that function is old That function, we say it is symmetrical with respect to the y-axis if the function in question is an even function, and we say it is symmetrical with respect to the origin. If that function we are looking at is uh, uh, is an odd function. Two, we should be able to find the uh, the intercepts. We should find the x and y intercepts if there is any three. Um, apart from this, we need to look at the, we need to find the x, the vertical, and the vertical asymptote, asymptote, asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes. If any exist for, uh, we should also try to look for other points that may lie on the graph. We should uh, uh, specify any other points that may lie on the graph. Of course, in the last lectures, we did look at how we, we can determine the vertical symptoms. So these are simply the values of x at which the uh, denominator vanishes. And we expect that those points, the numerator should not vanish. In short, they are in, in a given rational function, they shouldn't be common factors. Uh, then we talked about, this is asymptotic horizontal asymptotes. 
for horizontal asymptotes, I think we looked at case, uh, different cases when a rational function, uh, say in the form of P over QX. So if the numerator here, the degree of the numerator is lower than the degree of the denominator. However, if the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same, then, uh, for instance, if this is uh, the, the term with the highest power, say if it is ax to the power, say m, and here we have bx to the power m. So if this n is equal to m, then we expect, so if this, the degree of this term is the same as that, then the horizontal symptom will just be A over B. However, if the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator, then in that particular case, we conclude that the, we conclude that the, the horizontal asymptote does not exist. Okay, um, to start with, maybe we try to look at an example. An example that uh, uh, we can, let's look at this. Consider uh, the function the function f, which is defined by one over x. Of course, we know x is sitting in r, uh, is sitting in r minus this, because we cannot divide by zero. So we expect our x to be non-zero. So now what happens? So the requirement is that sketch the graph of F. To do this, we need to check some of these. So we check the symmetry. The symmetry is not a big problem. Just check F part minus this. And you know, uh, we expect this to be this, which you know is one x and this is minus f of x. Hence, f is odd. It's an odd function. Therefore, we can conclude that um, uh, the graph, its graph, is actually symmetrical with respect to, to the origin. So if it, is uh, uh, if it is symmetrical with respect to the origin, we expect whenever we have a point x comma y, then the point minus x comma negative y must also lie on the graph. Uh, let's check you. It's uh, clear here. You notice that there is no uh, the graph does not uh, uh, cut the horizontal axis, which is the x-axis. Uh, it's uh, very clear. Uh, and also, we don't expect the graph of F to intersect the y-axis or the vertical axis. 
So those two do not exist. So um, then we can also talk about the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is simply the x value which, he, which makes the denominator zero, and that is x equal to zero. The horizontal asymptote, as indicated before, is that um, the degree of the numerator is lower than the degree of the denominator. Uh, because there, one you can write it as x to the power zero, then you have, uh, we know x is not zero, so x to the power zero is well defined, it's one. And uh, the degree of the denominator is one, so therefore by the rule that we had stated, y equal to zero is the horizontal asymptote. So we can now try to put together this information. So this is uh, fx axis or the y-axis. And we have said that uh, this is a horizontal asymptote. So that is x equal to zero. And then we also have, this is, this is the vertical, this is the vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is this one, horizontal asymptote, which is one equal to zero. That is the equation of the horizontal asymptote. So now we are faced with this problem of trying to determine what happens when we, what happens when we are to the right of zero. Where is the graph? Is it below the x-axis or it is above? And of course, the uh, when you look at uh, the given problem, it's not possible to find the value of x such that uh, f of x is equal to zero. So there is no possibility of the graph ever intersecting the horizontal asymptote. Okay, now let's uh, see where the graph lies. Say so if I'm at one, according to that, the this point. 1 comma 1 is going to lie on the graph. So it's, um, yeah, so he, since this is the vertical asymptote, it will be approached asymptotically. It will be approached to ne never be touched. Similarly, the graph will try to approach this horizontal axis without touching it. It will just, uh, it's approaching it, but not in a sign ever reaching it. Then we come, now we can use the fact that this function is odd. So if it is odd, then whenever we have a point, this point is 1 comma 1, we must have another point minus 1 comma 1, minus, minus 1 comma minus 1 line of the graph. And the behavior is here, it is going to decrease unboundedly, and this side it's going to, uh, you know, it will decrease towards zero. So this is our graph, f of x equals one by x. Uh, as anticipated, uh, you see that uh, this function is not defined at zero. Uh, this is the domain. The range, it is all real numbers except zero, because it's only the zero which cannot give us the, uh, the, uh, the output. Okay. Okay, we can continue looking at more examples. Another example is sketch the graph of this function is uh, f of x equals minus 2 over x minus 1. If you try symmetry, it will not work out because, yeah, so it's not, it's uh, neither an even function nor function. 
So, but on the x intercept, intercept or intercepts, let's see, there is none. It's clear. Uh, because the only way this f of x can be equal to zero is when the numerator is zero. The y intercept, y intercept happens when x is zero. So meaning it is zero comma two. So that is where it cuts the vertical symptom, uh, the, the vertical axis. Uh, let's check for the asymptotes. Vertical asymptote, it's clear it's x equal to one. And the horizontal asymptote, uh, using the previous reasoning, it's y equals zero. So other essential points, that would assist us to sketch the graph will be looked at uh, as we continue looking at the actual graph. So this is the situation. We have the x there. This is the y, where y uh, is uh, simply the value that x assigns to x. So I put at the origin, I know it will pass through, this is one, two. So it's going to pass through that point, zero comma two. And uh, the vertical asymptote, we have one here, two. So this is the vertical asymptote, x equal to one. Horizontal asymptote is this one. And of course, there's no possibility, but uh, uh, the graph will cross the horizontal asymptote. Okay. Uh, we know it's going to pass through that point there. So how is it going? Okay. So you check, if you want, you can check, say, if you get some number which is 0 0.5, somewhere there, uh, where will it go? Because this is the vertical asymptote, definitely it will, it will be approached asymptotically. So the graph will come like this. But I expect, because it's not crossing this, it should come, should follow that asymptotically. So I think we are left with this. What happens to the uh, right of this vertical asymptote? Uh, is the graph going to be here or up here? Um, what we do here is that um, um, so we have zero comma two. And um, okay, so maybe at two, let's just check at two. At two, it will be minus two over minus two minus one, right? Okay. negative should not be there. That's the reason why when, okay. So when x is zero, this is the point we are getting. Um, yeah. And then, so if we are to the right of this, we could pick a number, any number, say two. Two, please. So if I pick two, it will be on top, it will be negative value. The bottom, we have a positive value, meaning that this thing is negative. It's negative, it's going to sit 
So it will be at two, it will be at that point to approach this side. And when it comes this side, it will approach the vertical center. So this is the graph f of x equals minus 2 over x minus 1. Please, there shouldn't be a negative here. It's just the x minus 1. Yeah, so that's the one which will, uh, will give us the required graph. Let's quickly look at uh, another example. This one, we have got uh, a constant numerator. So now what happens if we, the, the numerator is not constant? So, yeah. so graph f of x equals x over x plus 2. I think this is better. Let's see. So with this one, uh, you can see it is not uh, symmetrical with respect to y. Neither is it symmetrical with respect to the origin. So, but uh, the x-intercept, x-intercept, you see that the zeros of this function is just x equal to zero. Therefore, we expect uh, the x-intercept to be zero, zero. Y-intercept, y-intercept to be the same point. Yeah, because y intercept you are saying when x is zero, this will be zero over zero plus two, which is zero point zero. So it's the same point. And then we can talk about the vertical asymptote, which is clear equals minus two, and the horizontal asymptote. Remember the the term with the highest power there, it's x, and the denominator we have uh, x. So same degree. So if it is same degree, you can just say y should equal to x over x, which is one. Okay. Then let's try to put together this information. So this is your x, this is f of x. So we are saying the graph must pass through the origin 0, 0 there. And the vertical asymptote, if this is minus 1, we can have minus 2 here. So we have this, x equal to minus 2. And uh, also, I think that's the only one. Horizontal asymptote, it's uh, 1. So there will be another, this one, running parallel with respect to the x-axis. So this is my horizontal asymptote, which is y equal to one. And this is my vertical asymptote, x equal to minus two. Okay. So this is the situation. So maybe we can try to find out, you know, it has to pass through here. And there is no possibility of this ever crossing. Can it cross the horizontal asymptote? Let's check if you can cross the. Is it possible to find the x value such that x over x plus 2 equals 1? So this would be x equals x plus 2. So it's not possible. It's not possible. It will never cross this. So since this is the vertical asymptote, it must come down following it. And since it does not cross that one, it has to approach it uh, asymptotically, approaching it, but not touching it. Okay, so we have worked out the case when we are to the right of the vertical asymptote. Now what happens when we are to the left? When we are to the left, we can pick a point, say, minus three. When you pick minus three, because we want to see whether we below here or up there. Let's see. If I pick minus 3 and substitute it there, I'll have minus 3 over minus 3 plus 2, which is minus 3 over minus 1. And that is 3. So 3, this is the height from there. It's 1. So it has to be somewhere there. So that point, it's 
somewhere there. This is the vertical axis, so it will be approached asymptotically, and there's no possibility of ever crossing this, so this will be approached. And this is the graph. So this is our f of x equals x over x plus 2. So that is our graph. Okay, um, let's look, we need to practice to be able to, uh, you know, to develop the skill of doing these things or sketching them without uh, the difficulties. So I want us to look at uh, the graph, another example, sketch the graph, sketch the graph, of f of x equals 2x over x squared minus 16. Okay, um, so symmetry cannot be discussed here. Symmetry with respect to the y-axis as well as uh, with respect to the origin, that cannot be discussed. Just looking at the Let's wait. If I say f minus x equals, it will be like this over x squared minus 16. I believe this is an odd function. So it has, it is, it has, it has symmetry. The graph pool is symmetric with respect to the origin. Uh, yeah, it's, so that is important. So you can say the graph is metric with respect to, to the origin. So what this means is that whenever we have a point x comma one, the point negative x comma negative y must lie also on the graph. That is important. You see how it will assist us. Then the next we can check for the x-intercept. X-intercept, there are the zeros of the function. Those values of x which make this equal to zero. There is one one point, which is zero inside the origin. That is, uh, when x is zero, uh, you know, this thing, the only x value that is, uh, which will assign the zero to this, it is zero, so zero, okay, zero comma zero. And the y intercept, y intercept, you know, for y intercept, the x value must be zero, and the corresponding value is still zero. We can look at the, the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote, when you have to, you know, you have to work out x squared minus 16 equal to zero, x squared force equals zero. So x minus 4, x plus 4 equal to 0. Therefore, x equals minus 4 and x equals 4 are vertical asymptotes. So there are two. Then horizontal asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, you now compare with the, you know, the power in the numerator is less than the power in the denominator. And by convention, we are taking because this, it will be determined by 2x and the highest, the term of the highest power is x to the power 2. So it will be 2 over x. And when you allow x to grow very big, either in the negative sense or positive sense, that term will go to 0. Therefore, y equal to 0 is our vertical asymptote. So let's see, put together this information. Uh, to reduce the graph. So we have, this is your x, this is your y, this is your origin. We, origin is important. Okay, it has to pass through them. The vertical asymptote, just put x equals minus four, and the, we have this side, 
x equals to 4. I think these are the ones that we found. Okay. Then the other thing that we need to know is this line becomes the horizontal asymptote. Okay. Is there a possibility that uh, we can find the x value such that f of x is equal to zero? Is there a possibility? Um, okay. Yeah, is there a possibility that this can only happen at this point? So that's fine. So what happens is this is the vertical asymptote. The graph will come, I'm sure, like this, approaching it. And then when we are here, this is four. Oh, you can even pick one. Uh, one. When you pick one, um, we, we want to see its behavior when we are in the interval. 0 to 4. If you pick 1 here, what happens? 1. Is it coming down here or is going up? Is it going to be there? If you pick Okay, if we pick, say, 2x x squared, okay, that's fine. Uh, how is it behaving? Is it coming down here or it's going up there? That's the question. Maybe, uh, let's check, is this correct? This is say uh, if I picked minus one, I want to pick one this side. Minus one, the top part to be a negative number, minus because of this to be one, so it will be negative, so it will be positive. So I think this graphing is incorrect. Because at this point is so it's supposed to come up like this. So it's supposed to approach it this way. Approaching the and let me draw it. So I think it should come like this. And then here when you put one, I put x equal to one, it will be positive on top. One squared minus this to be negative. It means it has got a negative value here. So here it will come and approach this vertical asymptote. That's important. So I think this is what is happening. So we have covered what is happening between minus four and four. Now let's see what happens when we are to maybe we can even start with this side. When I'm at five, what happens? When I'm at 5, the top part will be positive. 5, that's 25, and so it will be positive. So when I'm here, it will be sitting up here, not below. Okay? So how is it going? So it's going to be, it's going to follow this vertical asymptote, and then this side, it is going to follow the horizontal asymptote. Now we can use the fact that uh, the symmetry it is symmetrical with respect to all to the origin. At this point you can even work it out. You see when you have five to be what to be 10, 25 minus 16, this is 10 over 25, six, Nine, ten over nine. So if, if you have a point five comma ten over nine, you must have the corresponding point because it's this symmetrical with respect to to the origin. You must have a point this side minus five comma negative 
ten over nine. So you must uh, the point. I think the one we are talking about it will have to become. Uh, so this is going to approach this vertical asymptote and it will come. It's approaching the vertical asymptote and it will approach this. So this is the graph of f of x equals to x over x squared minus 16. And you just need to be careful to check, pick some numbers. Here we have used symmetry. Definitely this point should be minus 5 over minus 10 over 9. It must be there due to the symmetry. We have told, we are told that the graph is symmetrical with respect to the origin. So that is. Uh, important it has assisted us to identify where the other branch of the graph should fall. Okay. So as long as it's a rational function, it can be sketched. Um, the next one is a bit interesting. It says example sketch let's sketch the function g of x equals x minus four over x squared minus sixteen. So we are faced with this problem. Let's see how it works. So if you try symmetry, I think symmetry will not work because it's going to modify this. This is going to be minus x, and when you subtract, it will not give us negative of gx. So uh, definitely symmetry cannot be discussed here. However, we, we can talk about the intercept. X-intercept. There are the zeros of that. I think it is just 4,0. That's why it is going to intercept the x-axis. The y-intercept happens when x is 0. So it will be 0, comma, negative 4 over this, which is 1 over 4, right? Um, then we can look at the vertical asymptote. Here it is tricky that you cannot just find the vertical asymptote by simply saying this x squared minus 16 equal to 0. And then you solve that for x equals negative 4 and uh, x equal to 4. That would be wrong. For the x value to be called the vertical asymptote, that value should not make the numerator 0. So that is the reason why the only vertical asymptote here would be x equal to minus 4. Because the other one, x equal to 4, it's making both the numerator and denominator equal to 0. I hope I've made myself that. It's very, very important. Therefore, this graph can uh, look at, we can even say x4 over x squared minus 16. Factorizing the denominator, we have x minus 4 into x plus 4. And as provided that x is not 4, we can cancel these two. And so the graph of this will be identical to the graph of this guy, except when x is equal to. So this is true if x is not 4. That is the assumption. So since the graph of this is resembles the graph of that, except the only difference at this point. So we are going to put a circle around the point x. We'll see how it happens. Horizontal symptoms uh, using the same fact y equal to zero is our horizontal asymptote. Let's now try to sketch the graph. So this is your x with y, where y is understood to be g of x. <clears throat> so 
So we are taught the only vertical asymptote is this one to pass through there, x equals minus four. <coughs> Horizontal asymptote, it's this line. And then we we know that Yeah, so you, you see the, the horizontal asymptote is this one. And the, it, is it possible to find the, you know, to find the x value such that this is equal to zero? Yeah, when you pick four, definitely four. Um, Four, it is uh, so we'll not be concerned with this because we are going to use this. It's identical to this, okay? So it's identical to that, and there's no possibility of uh, ever crossing this. Uh, so I think this this. So we said four comma zero. Okay. Four comma zero. Yeah, but we are going to because of the this what we observed here, we at that point four comma this is four. Can put four there. Okay. I'm going to put uh, you know, when you put four here, four here is going to be one over eight, right? So it will be one over eight somewhere here. So here it's going to, instead of, I'll put a circle, just a circle around this point, four comma one over eight. I'll put a small circle to show that it is perforated, it is removed. Because we are saying this is this identical to this except at this point. So I'm, I'm trying to graph this. So the only difference is on that. And uh, the vertical asymptote, it is um, 0, 1 over 4. OK, 0, 1 over 4. That is uh, somewhere up here. Okay, so it's going to pass through that point zero comma. Uh, the graph will pass through there. So what is happening that this side it will follow this asymptotically, and then it will come down here and follow this horizontal asymptote. So there is a circle there. Um, so this, please, this does not exist. At, uh, does not exist. None. Yeah, because the reason being that uh, when x is four, you are going to have zero over zero, right? Zero over zero. So. But provided x is not four, this, the graph of this will look like the graph of this. So why not just sketch that? And this is what I'm sketching here. And it will not intercept that one. Then next, we need to look at what happens after negative, after negative four. Maybe when we are to the left of, uh, say, negative five. Negative five, it will be the top part will be negative, the top part, the bottom it will be positive, so it means the quotient is negative. So it will come and sit somewhere here. So it will follow the, this and it will follow the horizontal asymptote. I think the graph will look like this. So our g of x it will be this over this. Because the graph of this is identical to the graph of this, except when x is 4. 
But when x is 4, we have put a circle. It's not picking any value there. Very, very important. Okay, uh, before I move to something different, uh, I want us to discuss another type of asymptote, another type of asymptote, and it is called the slant or oblique asymptote. The slant or, so let's quickly look at slant, slant or oblique, oblique asymptote. Asymptote. So, of rational functions, of rational asymptotes, of rational functions. Uh, of course, this is not. Uh, so, a third type of asymptote, a third type of asymptotes, asymptotes. Is called slant is called a slant is called a slant a slant or oblique or oblique or oblique same thought. When does it happen? It happens when the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. So, say this asymptote, asymptote happens when the degree of the numerator is one higher than the degree of the denominator. Always it happens just like this. An example would be when you have uh, a function f of x equals x squared over x minus two. You can see that uh, here, the degree of the numerator is two, the highest, okay, it's, this is the second degree polynomial, this is the first degree polynomial. So you see that in the, 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 the degree of the numerator is one higher than the degree of the denominator. So we expect from here we can get what we call the slant or oblique asymptote. So how do you find the oblique, uh, the, what is the strategy for finding the, the slant asymptote? Uh, simple, all we have to do is, uh, we just need to find the, 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 you know, we have to use the long division. So when you use the long division, because here the divisor is x minus, we can use the synthetic division that we have looked at before. So the synthetic division, I will have a two here. Then I have the coefficient of x to the power two. The coefficient of x, x is missing, I can insert a zero. Then we don't have a constant there. So it will be this, I'll just say this is the same as x squared plus 0x plus 0. Okay, there is no harm in writing like this. So, but if I do this, I'll bring down 1, 2 times that, that is 2, add 2, then 2, that is 4, add 4. What you get here is called the remainder. So, and these are the coefficients of the, so the coefficients of the quotient. So x squared, you have f of x equals x squared over x minus 2. You can write it as x plus 2, then plus the remainder over the divisor, which is x minus 2. So to get the slant asymptote, ignore the term containing the remainder. So I'm going to ignore this part. 
Therefore, y equals what is left, x plus 2, is the slant, is the slant asymptote. Is the slant asymptote. And this is why we know this. You can see that when x becomes very large, this term can be neglected because it's almost zero. So it can be neglected. So that's the idea. Um, next example is, says find the slant asymptote of some function f of x equals 3x to the power 3 plus 2x squared plus 2 over x squared minus 1. So let's check. When you look at this, you see that the highest power there is 3. It's a third degree polynomial in the numerator, and the denominator is the second degree polynomial. And the difference between the two degrees, you see it's 1. So meaning that the degree of the numerator is 1 more than the degree of the denominator. So in this particular case, we can find the slant uh, asymptote. The slant or public asymptote. Let's see how it happens through long division. I think we have exhausted. Still, we looked at this. We have 3x to the power 3 plus 2x to the power 2 plus 0x plus 2. So we can x to the power 2 divide it into this. It will give us 3x. So 3x to the power 3 minus, we have minus 3x. You write it there. Do this, then subtract. So we have 2x squared minus 3x. So this into that, we are going to have 2. So 2x squared minus 3x. Okay, if you want, you could, you could have put uh, this, but it's fine. Okay, so minus 2 will come here. I think you can bring it down here. So we do this, minus 3x, this is plus 4. I think there is something terrible wrong here. Sorry, sorry, let's see. Um, let's uh, do this. Uh, you make sure that this is in a descending powers. So we have this, then this, we inserted this, then plus two. So all we have to do is, um, we can say this into that, that would be three X, three X here. Okay, see, because we have this to the power X squared, so definitely three X. So then you say this times this, to be 3x to the power 3, then this times this to give us minus 3x. Okay, so you we are subtracting, so here to be zero, so that's why we can bring down this guy, and here we have this, right? Yes. I think we've seen all of this. You can bring down that, it's no problem, and then you can continue this into that to be plus two, two into that to be two x squared minus two, I'll write minus two here, then you do this, subtract. When you subtract, 
uh, you are left with uh, um, here, here because you are subtracting this, there is a minus, this will be plus. So please, when you are subtracting, that will disappear. This will be 3x. Here there will be minus, minus, so it will be plus 4. Thank you. Yeah, so that's it. It's better to write it like this. So what are we saying? What we are saying is that even uh, what we, our f of x can be written as the quotient, which is 3x plus 2. Then plus our remainder is 3x plus 4 over the divisor, which is x squared minus 1, right? Here it has to, since because the degree in the divisor is other than the degree in the, in the remainder where we want to, so we can't, the, the, it ends there. So you ignore the term where the remainder is. We are going to, and therefore, our y equals 3x plus 2 is the slant asymptote. So let's see how you uh, work out this thing. Um, at this point, I want us now to look at uh, uh, one problem which involves the slant asymptotes. So let's look at this, sketch the graph. Sketch the graph of f of x equals x squared plus x minus 2 over x minus 3. So uh, I will quickly do look at this together. So when you check here, you cannot talk about the vertical asymptote. Uh, but can we talk about the oblique asymptote? Yes, because the degree of uh, the degree of the function in the numerator is one half the degree of the function sitting in the denominator. So we can talk about the slant asymptote, and we are happy the divisor is this is of so this form. So we can use the synthetic division, which is much faster. So I have a three here. Coefficients one, one minus two. So we bring down one, three, four, that is 12. So when you add it, this is 10, your remainder. Right? So this problem you can write it as the quotient x plus four plus remainder uh, over the divisor x minus three. This is, this is how you can write it. Okay, and from here, because we said you ignore the term involving the remainder, therefore y equals x plus 4 is, is the slant, is the equation, is the equation of the slant asymptote. Okay, so next. Remember, we have to sketch the graph of this. So, can we find the vertical asymptote? Can we find the, uh, is it possible to find the x intercepts? Let's see. f of x is, we look for two factors of minus two whose sum is one the coefficient of x. I think we can write this as, uh, uh, it should be two and negative one. Uh, okay, this it will be x, and that's that. This is fine, and um, I'm going to have this. Okay, so x intercepts. Look at the the zeros of this function. So it's one zero and minus two zero. Y intercept y intercept it to be 0 comma so if this is 0 0 minus 2 over minus 3 so it will be 2 over 3 then the vertical asymptote is clear it's x equal to 3 i've said there is no horizontal asymptote okay now we can uh, just do this this is your x 
This is your Y. This is the origin. So if I put one here, two there, I can do one, two, three, minus one, minus two, minus three. I just want to identify these points. One comma zero, the graph will pass through this and negative two comma zero. And uh, there is a point that it will pass through this one. This is zero comma two over three, please. That's the point. Then we are told that x equal to three is the vertical asymptote. So this is the vertical asymptote. And uh, we have got a slant asymptote, which is a, a, a straight line passing through. Oh, I think we need more space so that you can see it properly. We need more space. We need more space, please. So this is your X. This is your Y. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Can put just a few here. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Okay, so uh, just see, as we have done before, let's put those points to pass through this. It will pass through minus two, comma zero. It will pass through this point here, zero, comma. You can put this, this is one, comma zero. This is zero, comma two over three. And this is minus two, comma zero. Because this is what we really got. Then the vertical asymptote is here. Okay. And uh, next, we have this the slant asymptote. Let's see, just put it's a straight line. So when x is zero, it is going to cut at four comma zero. Pass through this point. And this side, when y is zero, x will be minus four. It's coming to pass there. So uh, say how I wish we could reduce this space okay, because it's uh, giving me, it's giving us, let's put two, four, six. 8, 10, 12, so that uh, we bring it a, a little bit down. So, so that our graph now to pass through this, this is 4, 0, the one we are talking about. And then when we join this, you see that uh, this is uh, this, the slant asymptote. This is our slant asymptote y equals x plus 4. And this is the vertical asymptote x equals 3. Very good. You, we can find this intersection because the x coordinate is 3 and it's lying on here. So when, when x is 3, y will be 7. So no, we are not drawing these things to scale. So seven, we can say it somewhere here. So it is three comma seven, somewhere there. That's the point. Now, I want you to check when we, your x is four, where will this be? When x is four, this will be three into or six over four, four minus three is one. So that would be 18, right? So 18, it means this has to sit here, right? So the graph will be, it will follow this. I think let's use some different color. So it's going to, this is the vertical asymptote, it's going to follow it. 
and uh, this side it will come like this, following that standard same dot. Then we can check what happens. Uh, okay, remember this, it is going to pass through this, these other points. So it will pass like this, following the vertical symptom. And when it comes this side, we said it's going to pass through minus two, we say minus two comma zero, one comma zero. No, I think this is not, it should have passed, no, it should have passed, I think it is, bear with me, it's this line, it's a straight line, remember we are not drawing them to scale, so they pass through there, it should come through and pass through this hole. It should please, when you use a scale, it should be able to work out very well. So this has to pass through there. So that's the, it's the one who's giving me the hint. You say, no, what has happened? So please, this should be the slant, okay? So it should be a straight line passing through minus 4,0 and, and 0, 0,4. 0, 0,4 there, because I think this is the line. When x is 0, y is, so it will be 0, 0,4. And when y is 0, x will be minus 4. It has to pass through minus 4,0. This is the place, it should be a straight line. And the, the graph, it should pass through these points, and the, this is what I've indicated. Uh, roughly, let's see how the graph should look like. Uh, just to make it a little bit clear, um, what are we saying? What I'm saying is, this graph, it will be something like this. Uh, it's uh, to start, so this is the slant asymptote, and this is, uh, you can put this as the vertical asymptote x equal to 3. This is my slant x plus 4. So, what the actual graph I'm talking about, this line should pass through minus 4,0 and should cut this, the y-axis, at the point 0, 0,4. This is the origin. And they should intersect the vertical symptom and the slant line, they should intersect at 3,7. Then we are told that it should pass through this point 0, 0,2 over 3, the graph. And this side should pass through 1,0, which is there, and at negative 2,0. So negative 2,0. So it should pass through. There. So when we join this, we are going to have something. So when it comes here, it starts approaching that. And then as it passes, it's approaching, it's approaching this. And there will be, it starts here, it will approach this. And it is going to approach that. This, this is the complete graph. It's more clearer than that. So that's exactly how it should look like. Okay. Uh, now we can move on to what we call partial fraction decomposition.
partial fraction decomposition. Partial fraction decomposition. Partial fraction decomposition. So um, recall that, recall that two simpler rational expressions can be added can be added this is can be added for example we have this is a rational expression another rational expression i can add them under the same denominator by simply saying this number times another number then this time that is 3x plus 9 this time is that to be plus 2x minus 4. And when I see the parallel of 5x plus 5 over x minus 2x plus 3. So in the problem of partial fraction decomposition, we want the process which is going to reverse what we have just done here. We, we are given something like this. How do we find this? simpler expressions okay that we added to arrive at this this is exactly what uh, our interest is in partial fraction decomposition okay the, so we want the reverse process to recover the two simpler uh, expressions that were added to arrive at that I'm going to give some, uh, some property that we are going to observe each time we are faced with uh, uh, partial fraction decomposition problems. How do we, there are certain rules that must be observed whenever we are faced with that problem. So the following property, The following property provides the basis for partial fraction decomposition or partial fraction decomposition. So I will have this property here. So let's assume we have two functions f and g of x. Two, these we assume they are polynomials. Polynomials with real coefficients. With real coefficients, real number coefficients such that so this is real such that such that such that the degree of such that the degree of f of x is less than the degree of g of x. The indicated quotient, quotient f of x over g of x can be decomposed, can be decomposed into partial 
in two partial fractions as follows. Please, we have to observe what I'm about to give. One, remember f of x is the numerator, it's the polynomial sitting in the numerator, and g of x is the polynomial sitting in the denominator. So if g of x, the polynomial in the denominator, as a linear factor, as a linear factor of the form of the form ax plus b, then the partial fraction. partial fraction decomposition will contain will contain a term of the form a over a x plus b where a is a constant Two, if now the polynomial in the denominator as a linear factor, as a linear factor of the form fx plus b raised to the case power, to the case power. Then the partial fraction decomposition will contain the terms of the form. So for the first, remember this is a linear, so you start the, you know the, it contains, uh, it contains this, but this is raised to some power k. So there should be a constant associated with it. Uh, this, this is the power. Then a2 over ax plus b to the power 2, and should continue up to the last one, ak over ax plus b to the power k. So, of course, where the ai's are constants, they are constants for k for the i running from 1, 2, up to the last one, k. So I think this is Three, if g of x as a quadratic factor of the form of the form fx plus bx plus c, where the discriminant is negative, then the partial fraction decomposition will contain a 
set of the form. So it should be the linear part over the irreducible or quadratic. So where this A and B are constants. Lastly, if the denominator as a quadratic factor of the form ax squared plus ax plus c raised to the third power ah where b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, then the partial fraction decomposition, the partial fraction decomposition will contain the terms of the form, the form. So just like we had done before for the linear factor, which is raised to the power k. So in this particular case, we are going to, remember we have this, it's a irreducible because the discriminant is less than zero. So we, it's going to contain the term of the form a1 plus, I can put B1 here. Let's make it linear, B1 over AX squared plus BX plus C, then plus A2X plus B2 over this. Remember it's raised to the power K, so we should have one raised to the power one, raised to the power two, and we can continue like that, akx plus bk over ax squared plus bx plus c to the power k. So of course, where the ais and the bjs or bis are constants. They are constants for i running from one to up to k. So this is, um, uh, but uh, before we look at the examples, one important point to note is that uh, um, the problems that we we'll look at, uh, which requires to find the partial fraction decomposition, will require that we only deal with the, part, with the proper proper fractions. Okay, where the power in the in the given rational function, the power in the denominator should be higher than the power in the numerator. Uh, or equivalently, the power in the numerator must be less than the power in the denominator. So an example, let's look at an example. Example. One, it says find the partial fraction, find the partial fraction decomposition, partial fraction decomposition of 11x plus 2 over 2x squared plus x minus 1. So please, we are going to make use of the steps that we have outlined before to work out this. You can see this is proper. If it were 
not proper would have to use long division where we divide the polynomial sitting the numerator into the polynomial sitting the numerator. And then you apply the partial fraction decomposition to the remainder, where you have the remainder of the, the divisor. So that's the one that you work with. But the way it is, it's fine. So it, the first part, the first step is you factor, you need to factor the denominator denominator completely. Whatever is sitting, whatever polynomial is sitting in the denominator must be factored out completely before you can inject the, but of course you have to check, is it, can you factorize this over the set of real numbers? Is it possible to find factors of minus two whose sum is one the coefficient of x? So we'll see, if you have two and negative one, uh, this and when you add, so this one seems to be fine. So you get two x squared plus x minus one. You can write it as two x squared plus two x minus x minus one. Two x out x plus one minus x plus one. So we have x plus one into, so it is factored. So make sure that you factor it completely. So this will be x2 over the numbers x plus 1 into x, 2x minus 1. Okay, so you see that these are linear factors. They are linear factors. So the partial fraction decomposition template will look like 11x plus 2 over x plus 1 into 2x minus 1, it will be, I'll look for a constant a over the first factor, it's a linear factor, plus another constant over the second. Then once you have done this, you can now multiply each term here using this factor form. When you multiply the, this by this, it will remain 11x plus 2. Then you do that for this term. This will cancel with this. You remain with this multiplied by that. Then plus b into x plus 1. Please, this is an identity. It's an identity meaning that it is uh, true for any real number. So you can pick numbers conveniently in such a way that uh, uh, one term involving A or B can be eliminated and then you solve for the other. So uh, I want to eliminate B, so I can choose my X to be negative one. Everywhere where it is, and then I'm going to have an equation involved where the only unknown would be A. Okay, so, so let your X be negative one, I will have minus 11 plus 2 equals, uh, here it will be minus 3a, because this one will vanish. But this is negative 9 equals minus 3a, and it gives us our a should be 3. Okay? Our a should be 3. Our a should be 3. So this part now becomes, because I have only the value for a, I can write it 11x plus 2 equals my a is 3, so 2x minus 1 plus bx plus 1. And this is true for any real number x. So uh, I can now choose at will the value that will enable me to determine the value for me. So let my x be zero. B will still be there, it won't disappear. So, but I will have this equals three into minus one plus b. But this is minus four, so it, our b should be six. So therefore, 11 x plus two over x plus one into two x minus one, is equal to your you have three over x plus one, then your b we have just found six over um, 
6 over 2x minus 1. I believe if you add this, you should recover this. It's easy to see this. Because if I multiply this, this time this, it will give me this. This time that, that's 6x minus 3, then 6x plus 6. Like terms, something wrong. So it's what have we done here? Oh, this is minus 3, so it will be 5 here. So this should be 5. Okay, so 6 minus 3, so plus 5 and 5. So this and that is 11x, then this and that is plus 2. So this is okay. So, uh, so I think that's that. Um, we can look at some more examples. Example two, and find the partial fraction composition of minus 2x squared plus 7x plus 2 plus 2 over x into x minus 1 squared. So we have, this is a linear factor and that's a linear factor. Though so this linear factor, the second one, it is raised to the power 2. So so according to what we stated earlier, this will be 2x, x minus 1 squared. So I will have a over the first factor, linear factor, plus, now the second linear factor is raised to the power 2. I will have the constant b over this second fact, linear factor, then c over x minus 1 to the power 2. I think that's what we agreed on. Then, here I'm going to use this denominator. I'm going to multiply each term here using this. So this part, the left hand side, will remain with just this. Because this side, I will have my a. This x will cancel with that, so I'll have x minus 1 squared, then plus b, there will be x into x minus 1 plus cx. And this is an identity. It is true for every uh, real number x. So uh, the constants that we are able to determine here, that we have a, b, c for each x. So, what we can do is, we can, why not eliminate A and B? Then, alternatively, you can use, if you choose your X to be zero, this term with B will disappear, the term with C will disappear. You only remain with the term with A, right? Maybe we can start with that. So, if say let X be zero, so we have two equals A zero minus one squared, this term, these two terms will go. So this is what? This is A. So our A is 2. So our A is 2. At least we know what our A is. So we have minus 2x squared plus 7x plus 2 equals our A is 2. So our 2 squared plus bx into x minus 1 plus cx. Now here, if you choose x to be 1, this term with b will disappear, one remain with the term with c. So let's choose x equals 1. So it will be minus 2 plus 7 plus 2 equals, this term will go and that one will go, so we have c. So c is 7. Okay, so what you have, we have this 7x plus 2 
equals 2x minus 1 squared plus bx, x minus 1. Then where there is, that is 7x. So please, this is true for any x that you choose. But you cannot choose x to be 1 to be a cos or to be 0 because then you will have no b to solve for, right? So all you can do is you can choose any number which is convenient and which will not make the term with b to disappear. So I'll choose let my x be 2. Or well, it can be anything as long as it's not 0 or 1. So if I choose 2, I'll have minus 8 plus 14 plus 2 equals 2 here, that is 1. So it will just be 2 plus 2b. Then because that is 1 plus 14. You see, this will cancel with this, this will cancel with this. Therefore, your b is equal to minus 4. Okay, I think we have managed this is your C, this is your B, and this is your A. So, and we, we wanted to find A, B, C. I think those are the, the terms that uh, we have got. So, we can confidently write that therefore minus this plus 7x plus 2 over x into x minus 1 squared. So it's equal to 2 over x minus 4 over x minus 1 plus 7 over x minus 1 squared. So that's the, the partial fraction decomposition. Can look at another example. Another example says find the partial fraction decomposition of four x squared plus six x minus ten over x plus 3 into x squared plus x plus 2. So as before, you have to try to, uh, to factor or factorize the denominator completely. But when you look at this quadratic part, let's look at its discriminant. So that we don't waste time to be 1 squared minus 4 one, then two, and this is a negative number. So we can't even bother to uh, factor it. So it is irreducible. Therefore, we have four x squared plus six x minus 10 over the linear factor and the reducible quadratic. So we have two here. So we can write this as a over the linear part plus this is irreducible, so it needs a linear part here. These are supposed to be uh, different letters, B, C over the irreducible part. Then after that, we can multiply each term by this. So we have 4x squared plus 6x minus 10 equals a into x squared plus x plus 2 plus this one, it will be x plus 3 into bx plus c. So this should be true for every real number x. <coughs> so if I choose x to be minus 3, I'll, uh, you know, I'll only remain with a, which I can you know, determine. So choose let your x be minus 3. So 4 minus 3 squared plus 6 minus 3 minus 10 equals uh, a of minus 3 squared plus minus 3, then plus 2. This part will go, right? So this is 9, 36, minus 18, minus 10 equals, this is 9 minus 3 plus 2, 6, 8, 8 a. I'm sure this is minus 
that's six minus 28, that is um, eight, okay, eight A, and it gives us our A is one, okay? It gives us our A is one. So if our A is one, then uh, we can have, if our A is one, I can revise this part. How does it look like? It will be 4x squared plus 6x minus n equals x squared plus x plus 2, then plus x plus 3 into bx plus c. So we only have b and c to determine. Think at this point, just see, it's good to compare the coefficients. So x squared plus x plus 2, this time is that it is bx squared. Then this term and that, uh, if I put them together, 3b, then plus c, then x out, and then I'll have 3c, the, the outer one. So comparing coefficients, x, okay, we can, this one and that, Okay, if you want, you can compare it to be one plus b, x squared, and then the terms with x, there is this one, that one, if you put them, it will be one plus three b plus c, then x, and then the constants without any x, we have two plus three c, right? So you are saying this is an equal to that. So um, so you see that four. There are one plus b should be four, and this will give us our b should be three, right? Straight away from there, and then. Uh, 1 plus 3b plus c should be 6, but your b is 3, so 1 plus 9 plus c is 6, and your c, 6 minus 10, which is minus 4, that is your c. Okay, so the constant part is 2 plus 3c should be equal to negative 10. But somebody just found the c to be this, and uh, yeah, so two plus three minus four, it's, it's a true thing. What is that to be minus 10 is equal to minus 10. So we have already found, so your, your A should be one, your B should be three, your C should be negative four. So these are the ones, and then you can put them here. So this will be just one, your B is three, your C is negative four, so this, so it will be like this. Okay, we can do the last one. Let's see, work out, find the partial fraction decomposition. That's the example. Find the partial fraction decomposition of x to the power three plus x to the power two plus x plus three over x squared plus one squared. So this is, um, uh, let me check this one. This is quadratic, but it is reducible. 
because b squared minus 4ac to be b, you know, x squared plus 0x plus 1. That's how we can write. So this will be 0 squared minus 4, 1, 1. And this is a negative number. So meaning that we cannot factor it using uh, real numbers, right, into linear factors. So the, so it's reducible. It's reducible less to the power 2. So according to the scheme that we have developed, we are going to have x squared plus 1 to the power 2. So because this is quadratic reducible, it should follow with the linear part over x squared plus 1, then plus different vector, linear part over x squared plus 1 to the power 2. So to the power 1 and to the power 2. Then you multiply this out by this quantity. We have x to the power 3, x squared plus x plus 3 equals uh, ax plus b. ax plus b, there will be x squared plus 1. Then plus cx plus d. Okay, it will to just be like that. Think here it's good to just compare the coefficients x to the power 3, x squared plus x plus 3. So it will be a x to the power 3, um, a x to the power 3, uh, plus a x plus b x squared plus b. I've just opened out. Multiply my flat letter of cx plus b. I put ten like terms together. I will have bx squared, which is this. I can see my a x, the term is x, and this one plus c then x. Then the term without x is just it's just this. Then I can compare this, the coefficients. So you can just say comparing the coefficients. When you compare the coefficients, what are we having there? Um, you see that straight away a is one because of a will be one. Um, then b should be one. Yeah, because the coefficient of x to the power two is b here, and the coefficient of x to the coefficient is 1. Then uh, a plus c should be 1. But, uh, but this is uh, our a is 1, therefore uh, c is 1 minus a, which will be 1 minus 1, and that will be 0. Then the constant is 3 equals b plus d. But um, so d is 3 minus d, and this 3 minus whatever I done. d is this arrange d. Um, but your b is 1, so that would be 2. So therefore, you can check that this x squared plus x plus 3 over x squared plus 1 whole squared can be written as a x plus 1 over x squared plus 1, then plus our c is 0, so it disappears, and our d is 2 over x squared plus 1 squared. So it, uh, so it will be like that. So this is the end of today's lecture. We'll continue. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.